Now you might go to the restaurant, uh, if you remember going to the restaurant, and you might have a delicious meal with a delicious drink and some ice cream after. And at the end of the meal, you might have to split the check somehow. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to split the pressures of a sample of gas and uh, use something we call partial pressures. And the way we're going to do it, if you imagine that uh, this is air, and air is about... 78% nitrogen, so uh, N2, that's a diatomic, and that's a gas. It's about 21% oxygen, which is, uh, for us, the most important thing, probably. And this is dry air, by the way. And it is 1% argon, so uh, that's that uh, noble gas there. That's surprising there's so much of the air that's argon, actually. And the way we do it is we say that the total pressure of the air itself um, is equal to the partial pressures. So we assign each gas its own pressure, and so we use P for pressure. And as a little subscript, we write the gas down there. So this is actually called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. And uh, in general, this is kind of how we split the check here. So we say that the total pressure is equal to a bunch of part pressures or partial pressures that we can add together to get the total pressure. And if you're like, well, how does that help us find the uh, partial pressures? So how do we know what all of these are? Well, it turns out that we can just take the percentage of each gas. So if the nitrogen is 78%, that is 78 over 100. And we can multiply that by the total pressure. So this is the fraction. Um, of each gas, so, okay, and we multiply that by the total pressure. So we normally know the total pressure, and so we just want to assign the partial pressures in the same way we might know the total bill at a restaurant, and we might want to assign the parts of the bill that we're each responsible for. And so the air pressure itself, we said, is 760 millimeters of mercury, and so we can calculate now the partial pressure of nitrogen by just taking the fraction that's nitrogen and multiplying by the total pressure. And if we pop that on our calculator, I get something on the order of 590 millimeters of mercury or tor if you prefer. We can do the same thing for oxygen as well. So the oxygen, uh, it represents 21% of what we're breathing in. So 21% times by 760. So this is very fair, right? So we're saying if 21% of the air is oxygen, it gets 21% of the pressure. And so if we go ahead and we calculate that, uh, I get 160 uh, millimeters of mercury. And we can do the same thing for the argon. So uh, if we do the argon in green, it is 1%. So that's 1 over 100 times by 760 millimeters of mercury. And uh, oh, that's something like uh, 7.6 uh, millimeters of mercury. And uh, if we add all those up, if we add together the 7.6 uh, with the uh, uh, 160 from the oxygen with the uh, 590 uh, from the nitrogen, we should get something very close to the total pressure, 760 uh, millimeters of mercury. So that makes sense. It, it should all add up. So when you go ahead and uh, you split the bill at the restaurant, all the individual portions should add up to the total amount. Now, uh, with rounding, I think it probably doesn't come out quite exactly right with this problem here, but it should be extremely close. So we can uh, use an application of partial pressures, of Dalton Laws of partial pressures, if we remember the pressure of air is the partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen and argon and uh, carbon dioxide and whatever else it may be. And uh, we know that each one of these partial pressures must add up to the total pressure. Well, if the total pressure is actually a little bit lower, that means all the partial pressures have to be lower. So if you are sitting on top of a mountain here somewhere in North America, and uh, ooh, okay, we can draw ourselves here. We're pretty good. We're up pretty high. And uh, it turns out that that air right pushing down on you is what's given rise to air pressure. And uh, the thing about climbing up a mountain is that when you climb up a mountain, there's less air above you. And so the total pressure is much smaller uh, when you're up the top of a mountain. So if the total pressure is smaller, that means the total pressure of air is smaller. So it means that all these partial pressures have to be smaller too. So why do we care about this? Well, if your total pressure is smaller, that means that all your individual partial pressures have to be smaller. And that means that the pressure or the partial pressure of oxygen has to be smaller. So at the top of a mountain, you might have more trouble breathing because there's literally less pressure of oxygen in the air. And so if you train, say, at high altitude, 
uh, your body gets used to this lower pressure of oxygen and it uh, normally compensates by making more red blood cells and uh, then once you're used to it after a couple of weeks you come down the mountain and you compete in the southern Ohio Olympics let's say if that's such a thing and uh, you've got all that extra blood that's capable of carrying and grabbing all that extra oxygen out of the air and so at least for a week or so you do a lot better than you should be.